Should you buy the penthouse or should you buy a lower floor, a cheaper unit? Which is a better investment, high floor, medium floor or low floor? Friends, this is Yossi Kaplan. I'm your friendly Toronto real estate agent, mortgage broker, research realty and search mortgage right here in Toronto. And today I want to talk to you about should you buy a higher floor, is that a better investment? A medium floor, is that a better investment? Or a lower floor, is that a better investment? Okay. Uh, and thank you, by the way, one of the uh, listeners, viewer of my channel sent this question. Thank you very much. And uh, here's my quick little answer. So first of all, let's head to torontocondensforsale.com and I want to show you how to find penthouses and how to find low floor units or medium floor units for sale. So you go to torontocondensforsale.com, which is my site. You can do it with other sites too, but this is mine. I'll use it. Um, and this is the default search. I, I set it usually around, you know, the King West area, but you can set the default in your save search anywhere else and you can do a search and what we're going to do here is we're going to look for for two things first of all we look for expensive properties so i'm going to tick condo here and I'll say show me anything that is over let's say three million one two three four five six okay that is fine and i'm going to search and let's take a look at the sort order once the search Sort by, this is the sort, this is the newest ones, I'm not logged in right now. So you get uh, exactly what you want to see and the price, high to low. So these are the most expensive condos in the system right now from $3 million and up. 63 properties in Toronto right now. And now it doesn't say they're penthouses, but sometimes you see because the unit number starts with PH, PH, so that's the penthouse. There is another penthouse, 12.8 million. 15.5 million. This, I believe, is a penthouse too, just not. Uh, but if you go into the unit, uh, it may tell you if it's the penthouse or not. And I believe this one, this is a sub penthouse opportunity. If you can see down below here, I'll bring it up. Sub penthouse opportunity. Oh, okay. So these are these are a lot of these here are penthouses. You can also do a keyword search, uh, which is kind of tricky. But if you open them more. And you go to the bottom here, and there's keywords. You can put penthouse. Penthouse. And penthouse, by the way, for those who don't know, it is the top floor of a residential, the top residential floor of the building. So the penthouse will be the top floor you can live at. Usually, it's the very top floor of the building. Okay? And there you go. So these are all uh, answered to the keyword penthouse. So 8021 Blue Street West, of course, it brought the word penthouse because we saw it was written sub-penthouse. Okay, and so on and so forth. pH, most of them start with a pH, it's a lot easier. Now, should I do the exact opposite? <clears throat> okay, and just look for something really cheap. So if I'm looking at the low to high, is that a better investment? I can buy something for 338, 399, so not much. <laughs> one unit, two units under 400,000, including this one, 100 bucks less. But these are the cheapest units right now you can get in Toronto. Is this a better investment? Well, the story goes like this, my friends, and I'm not going to go into much of uh, testing. I mean, we can we can look at all the penthouses sold, what they sold, how much they appreciated, compare them against the the actual appreciation, and look at the low flow units. But that's going to take me a long time, and I'm going to tell you from experience of almost 20 years uh, in and out, not 20 years licensed, but 20 years in the real estate business. I licensed about 15 years ago, and what do you know? The small units in the short term tend to do really, really well. The small, cheap units. Uh, let's say you get into um, a VIP sale, okay? Let's say you get into a VIP sale, and remember, if you want to see the new construction, there's a bunch of ways to do it. Uh, an easy one to do is just go to the menu, go to pre-construction, and then click on the pre-construction list, and it'll just take you to the page. So if you get into a building, um, and we submit worksheets every week, four buildings, some we get them, some we don't, like everybody else. And if you wanted to get into Natasha Residence, or the House of Assembly, or El Condos, or whatever it is, M4, Mississauga, Mimico, and you get in the first opportunity, at the lowest price you can find, low floor unit, smaller unit, I already talked about large units on the low, on the low floor, not a good idea, but that's another video. If you can do that, the chances are that your unit will grow up pretty good because if you buy a unit for 600, and to go to uh, 660, that's 10 percent. But that same 60,000 dollars, if you bought it for six million, it's one percent. So you see how it works. <clears throat> Nonetheless, the large units, the penthouses, the high floor units, 
Uh, they tend, some high flow units here, there's another search I ran before, they tend in the long run to perform very, very well because there's only one penthouse floor. That's why they invented the sub penthouse floor, just to extend that offering. And usually these units will have high floor ceilings, 10, sometimes you'll find 11 and 12 uh, foot ceilings, especially in the high end buildings, maybe around New Yorkville, you'll find some of those. Um, these units will take longer to sit on the market and they probably don't change hands very quickly. It's not a liquid asset. A small unit on the low floor is much more liquid because it, there's just so many more people willing to buy a unit for half a million than even a unit worth one million, let alone the penthouse, okay? So it's going to take you longer to sell a large, high floor, expensive unit than a small, cheaper one. Now, what about the view? A lot of people ask me, should the view be something that we concern about? Well, yes, absolutely. If you have a nice view, if you have a nice view and you can see the entire city, someone will be able, someone will be willing to pay for this, just like you did when you bought your condo originally. You paid more because the view cost more. Okay? So somebody else will do it. Nonetheless, it means uh, view, and usually view will come on a high floor. I should have said that. Uh, but you look at a high floor, let's you live in up, up here, one of these, uh, this commercial, but up one of these buildings here, and they're very, very high. You know, you get great view. This is the well by Tridel, by the way. It's under construction now. Um, fantastic project. People will be willing to pay more for view, especially if you can afford it. If you need to live in a city and you want some view, then you got to pay for it. In the old days, before we had all these towers, maybe 20 years ago, view was cheaper. Now view is more expensive because you have so many neighbors. It's not enough to be in a penthouse. You also need to be in a panels that looks somewhere that you have some view. So yes, view worth money. Can you can you put a number on it? It's difficult, but you could, you could, <clears throat> um, because you can look at what stuff sells with view and what sell, stuff sells without view, and you'll see the difference. And there is a difference. Now, is it 1%, is it 5%, is it 10%? I couldn't tell you. Every unit is different. And also, what the unit mix in the market. Let's say a building has two units. One has the best view and one has a terrible view. Let's say they're even on, the, on, on more or less on an even floor. Obviously, in a perfect market, which is a lot of units, a lot of buyers, a lot of sellers, people look at the two units and go, I'll pay more for the view. Now, how much more people will be willing to pay for the view? It really depends. Um, maybe that day somebody walked into the unit you're selling and they're like, this is my area, this is where I want to live, I don't care for anything else, I, I can afford it, even if I have to put a little bit more to be the other guy, I'll do it, okay. But if, uh, if maybe you overpriced and then people come and don't buy it, maybe they'll go for the other unit. So it's, it's, it's really tricky and valuating property is something that you know, I do all day long, uh, but that is something that ask myself or another agent to help you. Uh, by the way, if you go to the urbanrealtytoronto.com, my site, under the special search, find all these searches. Now, unfortunately, we cannot search by view. That is a dynamic thing. You cannot report, this is a great view, this is not a great view. There's no, there's no, you can't quantify it like that. But psychologically, inherently, people do qualify views uh, because they're willing to pay more for them. Now, what's a high floor without view? Not that great. So when we say, do you want to buy the high floor? Make sure you got some view. Make sure you got some sunlight. Make sure it's a pleasant unit. And of course, and if you remember my video, the five L's, the livability of the unit, and look at it below in the YouTube, uh, the three L's. Um, the livability is very, very important. Uh, sometimes you find small units, large units with not that great design, even if your viewer is going to go, ah, I wish to just put this wall where it needs to be and not the kitchen on the side wall, but the back wall. And sometimes you get lucky. It's, it's hard in Toronto because a lot of the units are okay, but not fantastic. Uh, but when you find a great unit, <clears throat> to me, I'm a value investor and value, I'm not looking for a cheap deal. I'm looking for great value and great value starts for me with livability, a unit I can live in for a long time. Now, I'm, you know, now somebody will come and say, wait, what about the flips? Well, 
The flips are a whole other animals. We discuss them so much, especially around the assignments and the flipping and look at the videos. Um, but it all comes down to you have to be able to provide value to your renter or the person who's going to buy it from you. So when you buy a unit, um, if you can afford the high floor, that's great. Will it be a better investment by percentage? Not necessarily, especially not in the short term. Um, and you'll notice that when you come to buy a resale unit, a lot of the units of the resale, uh, they seem to be, there's a lot of units on the lower floors because those are the units that investors tend to buy. Investors tend to buy lower floor units. They're cheaper. They want to increase the bottom line. They want to increase the return on investment. They want to spend less and the rent's not going to get much more higher on the highest floor. So a smart investor will say, well, my rent, can't afford the higher floor anyways. Why should I, why should I not buy the lower floor? That will be a good living for someone who's renting and allow the people that want to live in a building long term to go to the higher floors. And that's what happens many, many times. That also means that if you are an investor and you buy into what's called the owner-occupied building, building that does not have a lot of investors, and those tend to be more boutique buildings, buildings that are off the subway lines, building in up-and-coming neighborhoods, building in certain pockets. These are things that I do. You, you know, if you've been following me throughout the years, this is these are my favorites because I think they provide amazing investment, good quality of living, and you don't have to compete when it's ready for you to rent your unit or to sell your unit. There's not a lot of competition because most of the people around you are owner-occupied. And if you want to know which buildings are these, ask me, I'll tell you. Okay? So it's not straight, but high floor. If it has view and good design, worth more, will you be able to cover the extra money you pay for the high floor? For the high floor, usually yes, but again, it has to be quantified. Okay? And that's a difficult thing to do. But in, in, to encapsulate this, Owner occupiers, they're going to live in a unit for 5 or 10 or 20 or 30 years. They're going to try to get the best unit for living they can. Investors are more concerned with the return on investment. So I'm going to live in my own unit for 5 or 10 years and I'm going to pay another $50,000 because that will be such a better unit. And I have the $10,000, the 20%, uh, to, that's the difference I need to put more, to upgrade to the better unit, to buy the better unit. And if that 40000 extra out of the 50, 10 I put, that's my 20%, and 50 I borrow, uh, 40 I borrow, part of my mortgage, if I can afford that, that I, I probably would do it. <clears throat> but someone who says, I'm never going to live there, it's just an investment, one day I'm going to sell it or rent it, should they save the 50000 Usually they do, unless they say something like, this unit is going to be for my children, I think I'm going to keep it for a long term, Maybe I will live in a unit at that time. Then you'll see people investing in units that maybe investment-wise, they're not going to give you the fastest return or ROI, but in the long term, they probably would. <coughs> and the investment is obviously not just in numbers because when you're going to sell the unit once the building stabilized, means a lot of the investors are out and the building is you know, owner-occupied and renters kind of good balance going on, then the value of that unit probably come up quite a bit because it's very hard to find good livable units on higher floors with view. Okay, I think I tackled that topic from every angle. If you have any more questions, let me know. If you want to invest, uh, pre-construction, torontoconnorsforsale.com, menu, pre-construction, pre-con list, any of these buildings, if you'd like to invest, just click on it, you'll get a form, just put the information in, submit it, and I'll get back to you with some great information. Until then, happy investing. Yossi Kaplan, thank you very much.